Welcome back to Keeping the Hill on the Horizon. We are here with Isara Ferrer, a very good friend of mine from New York, filmmaker, psychologist. Um, yeah. Why don't you tell the people about yourself? Well, like you said, my name is Isaura. I'm a life coach and certified spiritual psychology, which is a little bit different. It's a lot of spirituality involved in, in, the, in the coaching. And it's all about embracing yourself as a divine being and working your process through that. Ah, okay. Wow, wow. Well, as you know, our show, Keeping the Hill on the Horizon, one of the things we focus on before we do any exercise or nutrition is motivation. Because before you can accomplish anything, you have to be motivated positively to do it. And, and that's why I wanted to speak with you. I, I read that you had just been certified as a spiritual psychologist. So uh, why don't you tell us um, a little bit more about what spiritual psychology is? So spiritual psychology is starting from setting your process from the belief that you are a, a spiritual being having an experience and that everything that happens to you is in service for your awakening. So instead of thinking of problems like something that, why me, is for what? For what is happening to me? So it's starting evolution from a spiritual perspective, that we are here in this body, taking care of the body in service of the soul, so can the soul can awaken into the truth of who we are, which is love. So we all just made of love, and that's what we're here for, to awaken into that reality. Uh, that, that's that's kind of amazing, honestly. Wow, that is such a that's such a great way to look at life. Because if you look at life that way, there's no way you can not be motivated to accomplish your goals and figure out why you're here. Absolutely, and seeing that anything that is stopping you from anything that you want to do is just a way for you to look at that and work the process. What is it that is holding you back? If there's a problem that you feel unmotivated, what is the thoughts that you're having that you probably should look at first before trying to go and get whatever you need to get done? So instead of thinking so much, I feel that most of the people that, speaking from my experience, when I wasn't motivated, I was in my mind and obsessively thinking about how I was going to get things done, what was wrong, maybe I wasn't good enough, and the ego was just taking over any enthusiasm that was coming. But, but this way, um, it, through spiritual psychology, you can look at challenges as necessary to get you to your goal rather than stopping you from accomplishing your goal. Exactly. So just looking at it as an opportunity. What is it that is telling me? What is it that I need to address in order to create this? Whenever you're trying to do something, there's opportunities to grow. So let's say if you're trying to lose weight, you need to start eating healthy, and you have some experiences from your past that you were, weren't able to accomplish that, your ego is going to try to remind you, oh, my God, this is so scary. It's uncomfortable. We tried this before and it didn't work out. So that's the, that's the first thing that you need to work on is working on the ego, trying to avoid and say, thank you so much, but I have a different approach, and I can do this this time around. So getting rid of the unnecessary baggage from the past. Great. Now, now you said you're counseling. You're counseling people in spiritual psychology. Um, do you find that it's challenging to get people to accept counseling because counseling sometimes has a stigma? Absolutely. I believe that most of the people that I have had a conversation about this, they say, like, well, but if I am looking for counseling, am I crazy? And that's the stigma that is with counseling, like you're crazy or you don't have your life together. But I have a for counseling and I am a counselor because you always growing and evolving so counseling helps you to see the opportunities to grow and where are you missing information so just use that information to to evolve and grow with your with your life or anything that you're trying to accomplish so it's just finding a support system that can help you through the process so it has nothing to do with not having your life together or being crazy or, or having anxiety, if you do, that's also okay. But it, it's just think of it as a necessary, like you said, support system. Like if you want to get to a second floor, you need stairs or you need an elevator to get there. You know, you can't just jump up there. Exactly. And just having someone that you can work your process with. If you are 
obsessively thinking or you're judging yourself, I am a, I'm a believer that first, anything that you need to do, you need to get rid of that mindset that sometimes is putting you down. So some work is internal. You can probably go out there and do the workouts or buy your meals or do any projects that you want to do, but maybe you are feeling that, oh my God, this is so much, I'm not good enough. So somebody that can guide you through the process of assessing that love for yourself is very helpful as well. And the other thing is, if you try to find a quick way to accomplish a goal, you never completely accomplish it. Yes, absolutely. It's about, uh, it's just like terms that it says three food tosses, and it's like to avoid overwhelmed, because usually if you are thinking about doing anything, you are just thinking about the whole picture, and it's like an overwhelming that you're not going to accomplish that because it's so much. So. In three foot tosses, we talk about like how to break it down in small achievable goals that you can just feel comfortable with accomplishing, let's say weekly or monthly, that is not going to drive you thinking, oh my God, how am I going to get this done? Instead, you're going to take it easy and just go do it. Right, and follow a step-by-step -step approach, which is much easier to get to. What, what what led you to spiritual psychology? How did you come to find it? <laughs> I, well, to make the long story short, five years ago, five and a half years ago, um, the day of my father's death, I had a spiritual experience. And at that moment, I didn't believe in God. And I was pretty lost, drinking, smoking, you name it. And when people were praying for my father, I was just so mad and thinking that it was a waste of time. And the moment that I entered his room, everything changed for me. Like, it was like I felt him alive and at peace and love taking me. And that's when I knew that there was something more. And I started just researching, studying meditation, studying energy healing. And one of those teachers mentioned the University of Santa Monica, and I knew that that was the place that I needed to go to. So I started investigating, and knowing me and who I was, I was struggling with not being good enough at the time. I felt like, oh, I need to get ready to go do this. So I'm going to go back to school and do a degree in psychology so then I could be ready to do spiritual psychology. So that's what I did. I first went back to school and did a degree in psychology. And then I enrolled in spiritual psychology in the University of Santa Monica in California. And when I got there, I realized that I didn't really need the psychology degree because this is totally different. And that if you're living your life right now, you're ready to really awaken, which is that's what they work about, loving yourself, assessing the love, knowing that you are a um, spiritual being, having a human experience, and ready to work my process. I, re I realized there was a lot that I needed to work on, and I am so grateful that I was able to find it and do it. So that's like the shortest version of my process. <laughs> Wow, that, that sounds that sounds fantastic. Yeah, I can tell. I can, <laughs> I, I can tell because you, you you're always energetic, but you're energetic. It, it has a light behind it now that I didn't notice before. Yeah, yeah. I thank you so much. Yes, I think I, I always have the energy, but when I got in my mind, that's when I started losing it. Because when I was present, like, I think being present is key. When I was present, I think the love was going through. But when I was getting in my mind, that's when everything started shifting. So I was able to get that back with the work that I did. I can tell. I can tell. Wow. Wow. It, 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 people, they would have to see you to know before and after. Because it, it's like your energy is so much more directed now, you know. And, and it, it, it's really good. It's really good. <laughs> so um if uh, so uh if if say you were counseling me for instance and I lost motivation to accomplish some some goal of my life what would be the first step what would you what would you first take me through to to get me back on that path The first step that I would say is to be present so to get I would I would encourage you to get out of your mind uh, and observe those thoughts. You know, they're always going to come up. They're always going to be there. Acknowledging that they're not real, that they come from fear. 
as soon as you try to do something new and try to motivate yourself, your ego is going to be like, oh, oh, this is uncomfortable. And it's going to try to take you away from that. So being present in the moment, you're going to receive guidance moment to moment. We receive guidance moment to moment of what we need to do next. So if you're in your mind, you're not going to be able to see that. You're not going to be able to receive the guidance. Or maybe you're not going to be able to have that conversation with a person that is right in front of you that has the tools for you to get motivated or move forward because you are just so stuck in the mind. So that's the first step that I would say, like being present and making an intention to be present. Because a lot of people say, like, be present. And you'll be like, but how do I do that? When you get up in the morning, make an intention to be present. Make an intention to feel how you want to feel. So write it down. Take two minutes. Write it down. If you want to feel great, you want to be present, if you want to be healthy, write it down. Be My intention is to be healthy, to eat healthy, to enjoy my meals, and engage with everyone I'm having a conversation with today, and be loving and be kind and work from my heart and not my mind. So anytime you're getting out and back in your head, repeat that affirmation to bring you back. Every time you notice your mind going away, just repeat it and stay with it. And you see that your mind is going to start shifting. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. Um, last week we had uh, Dr. Jones, actually just past Monday, Dr. Lorenda Jones. And she's also a psychologist and she studies theology. And she mentioned that one of the strategies she uses for getting people to handle grief is to have them do a journal, write it down. And there's something very, very positive, very effective about having people write down the thoughts they want to have. Yes, and write it down with pen and paper. It does tremendous you writing it down instead of typing it. I know that this is the technology era and you're supposed to, everybody has a smartphone, but it really engraves in your subconscious when you're actually writing down your affirmations. So you're actually writing down how you feel and how you want to change. And then, then you can physically see it. You can physically look at it and it has a positive effect on you. Yeah. Absolutely, and you when you're writing that word down and you're trying to realize how you spell something, it's going to stay stuck in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> so then that forces you to be not just physically see it, but then stay, like you said, present. Present. And in intentionally, intentionally present. Wow. Wow. Okay, wow. So are, are there any other strategies for, for, for getting people to then once they once they realize that they need to be intentionally present to sort of stay on that path? So, like I mentioned before, the thoughts are going to come, and some of those thoughts are usually negative and judgments. So we are our hardest critics. So I want you to be actively accepting and forgiving of yourself. So if you're judging yourself that you're too old, that you're too young, that you're too fat, whatever it is that you're judging yourself, like you're lazy, that you're never going to be able to do that, I want you to actively practice forgiveness. And it's an easy process that you can do anytime that you notice something coming up. Just take you believing anything specific. It has no religious attachment. Just put the hands on your chest, on your heart, and you laugh. Close your eyes and just say, I forgive myself or whatever you're judging yourself. And just repeat that and really, truly allow yourself to absorb that forgiveness. Because you can create freedom by you forgiving yourself. So I'll give you an example. If you go to a restaurant, if you're trying to lose weight, and you go to a restaurant and you order the pasta, because I'm going to put that because that's my weakness, right? If you order the pasta and you find yourself after you eat judging yourself, you don't have to make a scene. You can do it quietly and just say, like, I forgive myself for judging myself from eating this pasta. Or whatever you are doing or judging, whatever judging is coming, whatever is the word that is coming, allowing yourself to take the time to be kind to yourself. Because the same way that you will not judge somebody in front of you and say, like, oh, you're a pig, eat a bowl of pasta, why do it to yourself? Sometimes we do to ourselves things that we would never think of doing to other person. So just being kind and allowing yourself to forgive yourself and also accept yourself. Just say, you know, I accept myself just as I am because I am perfectly just the way I am. And taking that every time a judgment comes, when judgment comes and you realize you're judging it, 
immediately forgive yourself for, for whatever thought comes up, forgive your thought. You can say, I forgive myself for having this thought right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Cause see, like the idea of keeping the hell on the horizon isn't about having a perfect body or being a perfect person. It's about accepting who you are and working to improve just a little bit each day. <laughs> you know? Because we already are perfect where we are. We just need to take care of the body because this is the tools that we use to experience life and to grow and evolve. So we do need to be healthy. But sometimes the thoughts that we're having and the judgments that we're holding against ourselves are the ones that are damaging us more than the food or the lack of exercise because they're toxic thoughts that you're keeping about yourself and those are the ones that are keeping you unmotivated those are the ones that are don't allow you to move forward because you're beating yourself up if you think about uh, anybody that has told you oh you this you that and you the other thing I'm, I don't want to mention so many judgments that people can do but you can immediately feel the shift in energy you feel if somebody tell you you stupid you're gonna be like and that's the same thing that happens when you tell yourself, oh, you're so stupid, you did that again. So try to avoid that. And that's, that's one of the things, people, people make comments about themselves and, and they say it so frequently, they don't realize how they're internalizing it and how it's affecting everything else they do. It's like we need to be mindful of why we're telling ourselves. And when you realize you're telling yourself, Go back to forgiving yourself for thinking about that. Go back to accepting yourself because most of the time that we are having issues with lack of motivation or issues with weight, it's because there's some emotional attachment to it. So let's do the emotional work first because sometimes we focus so much in doing the exercise and the eating, but we are not taking care of what's really happening that is allowing us to be acting that way. Motivation comes first, but it starts here. You know, this is the muscle you have to work on first. Your thoughts, your thoughts, and your thoughts guide your actions. Wow. They're doing the mind work. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, is, is there anything else you would like to tell us about spiritual psychology? Uh, but if there's anything else, like people can contact me if they want to know what I do. It's basically about just... Know that you are love. Know that you are a spiritual being. You have all of the tools within yourself to heal. You can heal yourself. You can access that love within yourself. There's nothing out there that is going to create that love and that joy and that happiness. And that you can actually create health by taking care of yourself and your mind. So please connect with your higher self. If there's one thing that you can do right now, just try to do the connecting with your higher self, with the true self, with your heart, and all of the answers there. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Anyone who's interested, we're going to make sure and put Isara, links to Isara's Facebook and Instagram and her upcoming website on our website. K-T-H-O-T-H dot com. Check back in the show. Sorry, we'd like to have you back. Um, you, you just bring so much positive energy to the show. It, 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 it's great to have to open the show with you. And this is our second show. So, you know, I just I thank you so much for, for coming on. Um, I, I, I don't know what to say. I'm choked up. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. This has been an amazing experience. I'm so grateful for you. It's so nice to see you again. I hope to see you in LA. And I'm coming next month. And I would love to be in your show again, obviously. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And thank you for taking time. All right, have a good bye. Take care. <laughs>